Billet architecture rarely works on renovation projects. Not only do they not come up very often in today's market, but they can be complicated. Renovation projects are hard to estimate, both from a consultant's fee, but also from a construction cost. They tend to require a great deal more client coordination, and they are often many unknowns. You never know what you will find once you start taking things apart. For these reasons, billet architecture likes a clean slate. A site that is clear of issues and ready to be a canvas for a new and wonderful creation. Today, a clean slate often means a small 60-year-old building that can be quickly torn down and the site made ready for something new. When we start a project, it is rare to worry about what the existing building is hiding. A big machine will quickly wipe away any issues. However, there are times when the past of a building can shock you and cause problems, even when you considered it a clean slate. Um, I got a phone call uh, from the site uh, just as we were about to start demolition and uh, in their words they had found a tunnel <laughs> connecting the uh, the two sites the next door neighbors and, uh, and our site and well that that kind of news sends a chill down your spine and as an architect <laughs> And so um, I contacted the uh, the contractor and uh, contacted the uh, neighbor, and um, the process started. These are the existing drawings, um, beautiful existing drawings from 1958. Um, just un unbelievable drawings. Um, 1958, uh, done by Douglas C. Simpson, uh, an architect uh, who designed the house next door at a time when both lots appear to have been the same lot. And what ended up happening was that this this side was is their side of the lot, but the house moved over and there was a billiards room and then a screen room, so uh, a screening room. So you can sort of see here that um, this area here is what ended up, the screening room ended up underneath our site and underneath where um, our, our building is. And this, for to, to cue for reference, this is this fireplace. And you'll see that when we move over. These are Dan White's drawings from um, 1986. And if you look at, I'll turn it in the same direction. This room here is the same as the screening room. And what they did was they kept the screening room and they made it part of the new building. So this is the property line and this is the house next door that's still connected. They just put a concrete block wall here and there is the fireplace. The same fireplace that we see right there on this drawing. So, <laughs> what we've had to do is we've had to figure out a way to sever the tie between the 1958 building and the 1986 building um, so that we can build our building. <laughs> Okay, so tell us about what the what what happened here, just when you were about to start demolition. So, um, uh, in the beginning, we saw the plans of the original house, and it was actually structurally connected to the neighboring house because this whole area, the living room, was part of the house beside it, and. Uh, so when they built on top of it, it was a whole new building. So we are 
demolishing this, we actually need to build a new wall. This used to be, there's a wall behind there too, but we need a new wall to support the existing beams, and we cut the slabs flush on the wall, so when we knock down this house, it won't affect the neighboring house. So this was a very, uh, uh, well, scary to begin with uh, process because, you know, if anything goes wrong here, the neighboring house will possibly, you know, be heavily damaged as well. So once the engineers had come through and uh, we had figured out everything that needed to be done, they started the process of pouring the columns and pouring the concrete and then once the concrete had set, cutting it all apart, severing the other house from our house. And now that both buildings have been severed, the demolition starts.